how do we get the DDL for scheduler stuff because DBMS metadata does not work. And it does work, but just in a strange sort of way. And you know, I, I'll happily admit, I'm not a super fan of how it works at the moment, but it's just uh, perhaps what I would call a, a slight shortcoming of DBMS metadata, but it works mostly. Let me give you a demo to show you how this works. So I'm gonna create a table called T. And just to, you know, to show you that DBMS metadata works in most cases, if I create a table called T, I can get the DDL for a table called T, no problems. If I create a user, I can get the DDL for a user, no problems. So DBMS metadata works fine. Let's create a job. I'll create this job called demo job. I haven't enabled it, it doesn't do much, it just does null, but effectively I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do nothing every day at 9 a.m. Let's get the DDL for that. So it's a job and I do DBMS get DDL job and it says that's a bad input value. That's where this question came from. It seems a bit problematic that a job is a genuine object type in the database, but you can't pass it into the object type parameter in DBMS metadata. What you can do is pass in the word proc obj, and that will give you the full DDL for a job. And that seems to be the case with almost all of these scheduler components. For example, if I create a program called demo prog, if I create a schedule called demo shed, then yeah, I can get, once again, passing in proc obj, I get demo prog, I get the create program DDL. If I pass in proc obj demo schedule, I get disable the calendar check and create the schedule. In fact, what looking at this output now, my guess is maybe it is if the DDL that comes out has to be procedural calls like DBMS scheduler as an API calls, maybe that's what that means. I I'm just guessing here. So, so far, it seems we've solved the problem. You know, if you have scheduler objects, just use proc obj as the object type. Let's now create a object, a job class called demo class. No problems, proc obj, yeah, it doesn't work. As I said, it's 99% of the way there. The vast majority of scheduler component types will work. It just so happens that that doesn't, unfortunately. So job class, uh, there may be others. And unfortunately, you just have to go back to first principles and query the data dictionary and, and work it out for yourself, which is a bit unfortunate. One thing I should note is there's a bit of an overlap here because from 19C onwards, when you use the old DBMS job syntax, it invisibly creates a scheduler job for you. We can prove that. I'll create a job here called does nothing. It's job 563. And the way that's implemented nowadays in 19C is we create a scheduler job which does the work for you. So the actual scheduler, the new scheduler does all the running of jobs that used to be submitted with the old job scheduler. So we actually create under the covers a scheduler job called DMS job dollar five, six, three. If you try to get the DDL for that using Procob and its name, you get an error. The database is smart enough to go, this wasn't really a scheduler job. This was one that came in through DBMS job. I wanted to show you that there because if you're writing a script, which is, you know, loop through every single scheduler job and get the DDL, uh, you need to bypass the ones that start with the word DBMS job because you'll get an error. The reality is there's a lot of stuff in the scheduler. You know, the good old days of just being a job and a schedule are gone. Like there's so much stuff in the scheduler, group members, email notifications, calendar strings, credentials. You know, I think DBMS metadata just needs to catch up because it's a moving target. Wow.